it's Jane from the Salty Drive Company. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about my faith journey, which is a question I get asked a lot even before I made a huge change recently this past weekend. Um, I, it's something that I get asked a lot anyways, um, especially with writing a Lamp and Light homeschool curriculum and people wanna know if I'm LDS or um, Protestant or Catholic or um, whatever. So people always wanna know and people are always interested to hear my testimony, my story of how my whole journey came about. Um, I want to say, disclaimer first, I will not be bashing anyone's religion, okay? Um, and I and I hope that everyone will be kind. It's okay if you disagree with me. I'm not going to get angry if you disagree. And if you have a question, like, I'm cool with answering questions. Just put in the description, or no, the uh, comments below it, and, and I'll answer it um, as best I can. So I'll, I can point you to the answer if I don't know it right off, right off the bat. Um, but yeah, I just want to, I just want to make sure that we're keeping this like as a conversation. So, um, so everything that I share is, is my experience. This is my journey. Um, and I'm not bashing anybody. <laughs> um, so I'll start at the beginning. Um, I was raised Muslim. Uh, my stepfather was from Pakistan. Uh, we lived there for a little bit when I was a teenager. And, um, for me, um, it wasn't a very peaceful or hope filled religion. Um, that wasn't my experience personally at all, not even close. Um, I really, really didn't like it and it led me into atheism. Um, around the age of 11, I started really just not believing that there even was a, a God. Um, and if he did, I didn't feel like he cared for me. That's that's how I felt um, as a child growing up into my teen years. And then, and this used to be my old blog before it just was deleted, <laughs> which was a fun experience. But um, so I have this friend, uh, Nicole, and I'm still friends with today. And when I was 16, she, well, when we were in high school, she kept asking me, like after my parents divorced, so we, we had freedom to do something different with our faith. She kept asking me to come to this direct hit. It was like a Christian teen hangout on Friday nights. And that did not sound cool to me. I didn't want any part of that at all or anything that looked like religion because, or faith because, it, the, my only experience with it was very negative and because it was and I was atheist I didn't want to do that so I would say like yeah I'll ask my mom but I definitely didn't ask my mom because she would have been like whatever go like and I didn't want to go so she kept asking me and finally I was like whatever if I go, if I go you stop asking me and she's like yeah and she always asked without fail like she she never seemed offended that I was like eh. <laughs> so so I think it's amazing that she was so persistent but like joyfully persistent like even when I didn't go or show up she was just like you want to go this week <laughs> so bless her for that she gave me my first Bible that I still have my Christian teen study Bible I think it was um, and she she I just love her for for what she did she, she doesn't realize maybe even that that was like a really big pivotal moment in my life when we went to this youth group i wasn't sure what i got myself into there was singing we didn't have that in islam there wasn't the the whole experience was just so radically different from what i was used to everyone seemed really happy and i wondered for a moment if maybe i'd gotten myself into a cult i was like what is this so um I, I, I got hungry for, I wanted to know who Jesus was. I didn't know anything about him, had no idea Christmas had anything to do with Jesus. I just thought about Santa Claus. Um, and even years later, I didn't even know Easter was about Jesus. Even after I was a Christian, I just didn't know. <laughs> um, so anyways, so um, I became a Christian slowly. I had a lot of questions and I wasn't really sure if, if I believed. And so I was a teenager, that was, I was about 17, 16, 17 years old. And over, over time, I've really grown in my faith and the Bible and reading scripture. And that was, you know, the most, one of the, the most important thing that's ever happened to me is, is, is finding Jesus. And I say that knowing that Jesus always comes looking for us. I love the story about Jesus leaving the 99, the, the story that is told about leaving the 99 to, to get the one lost. And he, God is always searching for us, which is different from every other faith. Um, and that while we're seeking God, even if we're not, even when we're not, God is always loving us and seeking us. And I just, I'm going to try not to cry through this video, but this is, this is the core of my being. This is, this is the most important thing about me is my faith and what I believe. So let's see where we're going to go next to this. So um, I did always, I did go to a Catholic church once in the beginning of my Christian journey and um, 
I didn't understand it. And so I was like, well, this isn't for me because I don't even, I don't know what this is about. Um, they had a statue of Mary. I'm not sure what that was for. Um, I'm going to look at my notes a little bit <laughs> so I can. So over the, over the years, um, I thought, there, I went through like different waves where I just thought like, I think there was a point in time where I was uh, definitely anti-Catholic, um, thought that Catholics weren't even Christian. I thought, I thought, well, I'll just, okay, so here are the issues that I had with the Catholic faith. Uh, not sure what was going on with the whole Mary thing. It looked like worship to me and that seemed blasphemous. <laughs> um, idol worship, it looked like idol worship with the statues and the pictures and not sure what that was for. Um, confessing to a priest, I thought you just had to go to God. I didn't understand why that was necessary or why they held that in high esteem or whatever. Peter as the rock of the church, what? And uh, my, I believed that Catholics didn't read the Bible. It's laughable now, but like, I really believe that. And, um, and I thought that Catholics just made up beliefs that weren't in the Bible. So, and what I'll do instead of like, cause this will be a really long video, instead of like, like trying to list all of the scripture that supports this. I think what I'll do is like link videos and write scripture for each one of these points in the description box. I think that might be easiest. I will say this, that while I was on this journey, um, I was shocked to find biblical evidence. That was really um, earth shattering for me, that it was, it rocked me uh, quite a bit. And um, surprisingly, sometimes I had actually highlighted the text in my Bible without realizing what it was saying in the context of what was going on at that time when it was written and what the author was saying and who he was writing uh, this for and, and to. So, um, I, you know, I know people are wondering why I would make such a radical change from Protestantism to Catholicism. Um, cause I'm, we're Catholic. My, um, we were Protestant. My, we shopped around a lot at churches. We went to Baptist church, Methodist church most often, and then non-denominational and different ones over the years. We were always church shopping. If uh, one Methodist church was different from the next Methodist church, they were just all different. So I think, I think Protestants are kind of familiar with that feeling of like church shopping to kind of find your, where you fit in, you know? Um, and that, that seems to be pretty normal, pretty typical. Um, um, it's definitely something that people I, I know that are Protestant experience the same that uh, we did every time we moved or um, didn't feel fed at the church we were at, we would go searching again. <laughs> so um, I think there were definitely moments of feeling set, like once I'd found the right church and then it, it would only last for a time, even if that time was years, um, it would eventually, I would end up going searching again. It, it's still, I don't know why <laughs> it felt like I was always searching um, for the right Fit. It just seemed like something was always missing everywhere I went. It just like tugging in the back of my mind, but I usually try to push it back. I'm like, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm the problem. So, um, so knowing what we used to believe about Catholics, you know, why would why would we do this? Knowing that we would encounter most likely opposition from family uh, hostility. Um, most of our families, my husband and I, family are, are Protestant, um, and some of them are anti-Catholic. So. <laughs> Um, I, I knew that I would possibly lose business. I write, uh, for those of you that, that don't know, I write a uh, homeschool curriculum, um, which I thought was for all Christians, and I realized uh, upon further study that it um, is not, it, it's for Protestants, basically, because uh, Catholic church history is very different, and so I didn't realize that. I thought it was just for all Christians. I thought that's what I was doing, but um, it's, it's definitely Protestant church history, and I did change it to say Protestant church history so that there's no like confusion for people who are Catholic or LDS, I don't know. So, um, And I have lots of LDS friends, but I don't know exactly all of their beliefs, so I won't like comment further on that because I, I don't know. Um, I just uh, know that there's, like we all believe in Jesus and one God, but it's kind of all, I know it's different for everybody. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what everybody believes, so. Um, I know we were scared of losing friends. Um, and we did this in an area that is not welcoming of Catholics. We live in the South in the United States and the Southeast in the United States and, um, Knoxville, where we live in Tennessee right now is 2% Catholic too. Um, most people are Southern Baptist. There's all different kinds of churches. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a church, not even like every block. There's like a couple on every block. They're everywhere. Um, which is great that, you know, the family of God is growing. It's just, um, there's not many Catholic churches here and there's not a big Catholic population. Um, we did experience some some people we had to stop doing certain activities with our kids because um 
we noticed a undertone of hostility towards Catholics um, in organizations that are supposed to be welcoming of all Christians, um, at which Catholics are Christian. <laughs> so um, we found that was hard um, because we were trying to make friends in a new place because we um, we lost our home in a hurricane and moved to Knoxville, and we we just were looking for friends and then we thought we'd made some and then it just <laughs> it just was uh, a hard journey on top of we were already going through a hard journey so um i guess um i'm not sure like how much to go into in this video like i feel like this could be a series of videos i do want to say that my after researching each catholic doctrine and finding out um where that where these doctrines came from were they made up i wanted to know if they were man-made this journey started with me trying to prove catholicism wrong that's what i thought i was going to do. I thought like, all right, once and for all, this is it. I'm going to show the Catholics what they believe is not biblical and it's just wrong and blasphemous. And that's just not what happened for me. Um, it, it just wasn't what I thought. What I had been told, what I had learned, what I had believed was wrong. Everything I had heard was a lie, um, at least about the Catholic faith. And so like this video isn't to like, you must be Catholic. That's not, that's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm saying is, um, it, at least uh, learn the, about what's true and what's not about what Catholics believe, just so that we can, as a body of Christ, as a, as a people who believe in Jesus, can understand each other, where each other's coming from. I should probably learn more about LDS. I have several friends I should ask about that. Just so I can, just so we can have a conversation. Like, like me knowing so much about Islam helps me talk to other people who are Muslim. So um, it helps me understand where they're coming from, what their faith is. I totally understand it because I, I lived it for most of my life, most of my childhood that I was raised Muslim. So in that vein, I want to like, um, you know, open up a dialogue. That's, it, it's, it's, it's okay if you don't agree with me. Um, I understand that we're not all going to agree. That's why we have, you know, free, free will. Uh, God gave us that, so and He gave us minds so that we can learn and discover and, and ask questions. Ask why. Um, lots of people in the Bible asked why. <laughs> that was part of the homily at this past mass. Actually, was or this past week we had an ecumenical service at our church that had a bunch of. We had uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Seventh Day Adventists. Everyone came to speak on the seven last words of Jesus. Not like. Word, like single words, like the seven last things he said from the cross, which was a beautiful service, moved to tears, so beautiful. So knowing all the things that could have, could have happened and will happen, I know that I'll, I'll lose business. Why would I do this? I was terrified. I've been praying about this for months. Um, since January, very, very regularly, I was, I was terrified. I was like, I don't, I can't, I didn't want to be Catholic. I was terrified at letting people know that we're gonna be Catholic. And I found out several of my friends were Catholic and I never knew. And I have a feeling I know now why they didn't tell me or say anything is because they were scared. They were scared of what people would say about them or to them, uh, you know, even friends. So I, I get that. Um, and this this is still terrifying. It's <laughs> just making this video because I know people are gonna be angry. Um, I, can't, I can't control how other people feel. I know that I have to, um, live out my faith even if other people disagree with me and so because it's the most important thing and because it's the most important thing I had to make sure that I was making the right choice and my husband was on the same journey too and we had, we would never do anything intentionally obviously to lead our children away from Jesus and um, in the Catholic faith we found that it really draws us close to Jesus this is our faith and our experience this is our journey um, so I do want to share like my favorite things about the Catholic Church because it's funny, my favorite things are the th are the things that I disliked, that pushed me away from Catholicism until I found out the reasons why it's done. So my favorite things are the Holy Eucharist or communion is what um, they call it in Protestant Church. Well, I've heard some Catholics say communion too, but um, the Holy Eucharist is the host, um, the bread, the body of Christ, and then the the, the blood of Christ in the wine. So, um, that if, if nothing else, that will always keep me in the Catholic church always forever. Um, because it's biblical and, um, 
In fact, it's it, John 666 is the only time that disciples of Christ, people who love Jesus, turned and walked away because this was too egregious to him. He, he was talking about to them what they saw it as, the people who were listening to Jesus saw it as, um, you know, cannibalism. So they were like, whoa. And at any point, he repeats himself repeatedly, you have to have the body of Christ. And they were, and he kept calling himself the bread of life. People were like arguing in the crowds like, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? At any point, Jesus can be like, guys, it's a parable. Guys, I, I'm just meaning symbolically. He could have done that, but he didn't. He just kept repeating himself until people, everyone walked away. Like he turned to his disciples and was like, so are you guys gonna leave me too? And it's Peter that says, where, where would we go, Lord? You're, you're the, so it's just beautiful. It's just amazing how I've read John so many times and never noticed that. I don't know, it's always there. And when I was doing this journey, I didn't use a Catholic Bible. Um, the Catholic Bible has seven more books than the Protestant Bible, which is also made by Catholics. Um, the Bible was created uh, 300 years after the last uh, apostle died. So um, I used my Protestant Bible to look everything up because I was scared that I would be like led astray or something. So I wanted to make sure that it was in my Bible that I believed so, I, you know, okay, I didn't want to be using a Catholic reference to... Anyways, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say, it's not coming out the way I mean it. Um, another thing, um, oh, about Catholics not reading the Bible, I totally completely believe that, but when I started going to Mass, I realized the whole thing is scripture, like start to finish. Like the Psalms that we sing back and forth, it's, they're Psalms. Um, the whole thing is scripture. The whole thing. Every word. It's, it's beautiful. I had no idea. and. Um, if you go every day or read from the readings every day, they go through the entire Bible, including the seven other books. Protestants call it the Apocrypha. So if you have a, a Protestant Bible that has the Apocrypha, that's what those books are. So it um it go they go through the whole Bible in three years, which is amazing. So like every three years we go to Mass every day or read the um, read the readings every day because I have a Magnificat that I read from, um, which is just the daily scriptures and prayers. Um, confession. Um, it's in the Bible. Um, I love confession. I was really scared to go and I had to go before um, getting confirmed in the Catholic faith and I was like terrified. <laughs> My husband was the first to go and he was like, I feel awesome. And I was like, I still don't want to do this. <laughs> so when I went, I was so nervous the first time. I like, my brain was like wiped and I completely forgot like what I wanted to say. And they walk you through it. Like, it's not like I was like, he was like, Come on, now get it together. He was just like, it's okay, I'll walk you through this. And I thought I wanted the screen, but I totally did it face to face. And that was, that was, I, oh, I cannot, I don't even know how to like, I had to call my husband right afterwards. Okay, so the first time, sorry. So the first time I was so nervous that I, I like forgot things that I needed to confess. But when you go to confession, even things that you forgot or things that you didn't realize were sin, you're, you're absolved of those sins, so you don't have to. But if you want to bring them back up, that's what the Father told me. So. I went and um, uh, I went back uh, a few days before confirmation and I was like finally released and I have never in my life felt so free from bondage and uh, it's, gosh, I really can't explain it like unless you've, unless you've experienced it, it's, so I've always felt forgiven for like small stuff I guess, you know like, God, I don't, I don't know, like Catholics call it venial sin, they're Typically things like if you I don't know I see the example of like stealing pens or uh, white lies or whatever like small stuff like and I felt bad about it. I would you know um, ask God for forgiveness just straight to God you you can do that in Catholicism too you can just talk to God um, but we um I, I felt forgiven for that but any big things that I'd ever committed even way back when I was a teenager I kept asking for forgiveness for it, even though I knew and the only answer I got usually um, from the churches I've been to before were just just have faith but I still didn't feel forgiven uh, for certain things and I know God loves me and he know he knows my heart and that I really felt bad um, and it's amazing how some of that stuff that you've done a long time ago when you're a rebellious teenager you know if you if you did that not everybody does that but you know it just, just sticks with me and I'm just like the shame and the guilt it's gone. Like after I went to that second confession and got it all out, I'm gonna cry. I feel so amazing. Like I had to call my husband immediately after because I knew he would understand. And he was just like, I know what you're feeling. 
your what you're feeling is complete. I feel like a whole person. Like I feel like I was broken and now I'm not because it's just gone. Like it doesn't even come up in my thoughts anymore. It's not a pervasive thing in my mind. It just it just feels so amazing. I love confession. <laughs> that was a long Okay. Um, Mary. Uh, actually, I should say that one last. That was the hardest thing for me as a Protestant. <sighs> I <didn't> know. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Mary was the hardest thing for me because I just didn't understand why this emphasis was on Mary. I just didn't get it. And there's so many levels to unpack there. So I'll leave a few links. And this book that I'm reading, Behold Your Mother, which is uh, what Christ says from the cross. It's an amazing book. It's written by a Protestant pastor. He was um, Scott Hahn. He's um, now a Catholic. And man, do I admire um, pastors who have converted to Catholicism because they literally lose their whole livelihood, especially if they're married. Like they can't be a priest because they're married. So it's just, I just admire them for like the terrifying sacrifice um, of just like, I have no job now. Like, what do I do now? Um, his book, Rome Sweet Home, I'm gonna link below, that is an amazing book. And I totally can relate to his fear of like the first time he said a Hail Mary. And he, he was like, I'm gonna get struck by lightning. That was literally my thought. Um, the first time I said a Hail Mary, I also was like, God, like I was praying so hard through this whole journey. Like, if this is wrong, please God, I need you to stop me. If this is not right, I, I really thought when I said a Hail Mary, I was going to get struck with lightning. Like I. I thought I was just doing something horribly wrong because I hadn't said it before, but... <sighs> okay. So the other, um, one of my other things, so other, I said I'm gonna link up those things below. Sorry, I, my camera died, and so like I'm trying to pick up where I was <laughs> in my train of thought. Um, the rosary is what I picked up for Lent because um, of the, the, the hard time I had with um, the Mary, Mariology, basically. Um, and so I didn't, I, because I didn't understand it and I was still working through that. For when I picked up the rosary every day because I thought it was about Mary, but it's not about Mary. <laughs> the rosary is literally the, the walk of Jesus. Like it's it's like the New Testament on a string. It, it walks you through his life and journey. Like it's not, it's not just about Mary. It's his whole story, his, his life and uh, resurrection and dying on the cross, the sorrowful mysteries hit me every time because I always like envision myself there with her at the, with Mary at the at the foot of the cross, and I'm, and that, that's always been so real to me. It's kind of like when I watched Passion of the Christ movie. Um, that's how I kind of envision me being there, watching that un unbelievable act of love by Jesus, by God to to die for us, and so um, the reality of that hits me when I pray the sorrowful mysteries. Um, which walk you through the crucifixion, which walk you through um, the torture that Jesus went through. And it's my favorite, but also makes me cry while I'm praying. <laughs> so um, pretty much all of them do, but especially the Sorrowful Mysteries, they really uh, get me every time. So um, the statues and pictures, now that I understand why, I totally get it and it makes sense. So there, you don't, um, you know, like if you're, I've seen people take like pictures with like, like a statue like of whatever, like a famous fig figure or something in, in history or whatever. So they don't, they're not worshiping the statue. Like they know, well, I, I hope they're not we're worshiping the statue. They know that that is a physical thing made out of metal or stone or whatever. Um, same thing. So why, why have them then? What is that? They're reminders. So when I see, I have a, I think you can almost see it. That's a statue of Mary that holds one of my rosaries. Um, it reminds me to pray. Like, oh, I need to spend some more time with Jesus. And I spend more time with God than I used to. Like, all day. Like, I feel like I'm like, oh, I should pray again. Like, I love it. I love being in prayer most of the, my day. It's, just, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful relationship to have with God. That, that personal relationship that I've always been trying to, I don't want to say perfect, but try to enhance as I grow in my faith to enhance my prayer life. That's so important to me. And so the reminders, if I see a picture of Jesus, I remember, I'm like, oh, let me go pray. It, they're just reminders. Um, if I see Jesus on the cross, that reminds me of the sacrifice. Why am I so emotional? Like That reminds me of the sacrifice that he did for all of us. Also, the devil really hates the cross and he especially hates it with Jesus on it because that's just a further reminder of how he lost the battle. 
So, um, anything that makes the devil angry, so, <laughs> um, they're, they're reminders. That's what they are. It, they're reminders. Um, pictures of saints, people who, I'm not going to get in, into the whole thing about saints too. That's a whole nother video. But, um, basically, um, I, I liken the study of saints to how I used to read about missionaries, Protestant missionaries. Um, and you kind of like, we, like role models, like we're always looking for good role models for our kids, you know? And so when we read about missionaries, you know, we're like, man, you know, they were really on fire for God and they really were trying to grow the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, it's like that. So they have, they're such great examples um, because, um, and I love Proverbs 31, the Proverbs 31 woman. I, I do, but she was like perfect, <laughs> which is hard to live up to. And when you're learning about missionaries as a Protestant or you're learning about saints as a Catholic, these people struggled. They were humans who really, really struggled with regular life things and some things that I hope none of us ever have to experience. The persecution that Christians have had over all the generations is just, it's heartbreaking to read about, but at the same time, it's empowering. Like, wow, they loved God boldly. Like, they didn't care what other people said or what other people thought of them. They really, really believed their faith. And I think that's so admirable. And so, I said I wasn't gonna go into saints, and I did. So, we don't worship saints either, so it's not, that's not that. Uh, when you ask a saint to pray for you, um, we're all part of the body of Christ. It's in the Bible. Um, uh, the, communion of, the communion of saints, the cloud of witnesses. Um, we're, it's like, if I ask a friend to pray for me, that's that's fine, right? Um, people in heaven aren't dead; their their souls are alive, and they're with God in heaven. And so, you're asking them to say an extra prayer for you because you're praying. And like, I'll ask my friend Bethany to say a prayer for me, and I'll ask a, I'll ask a, also ask you know Saint Lucy for a prayer. Like, hey, can you pray for me? And I've seen so many miracles that are just mind blowing and I have been journaling them just so that I don't forget all of the amazing things that God has done for us in the past, you know, several months that we've been on this journey that the miracles are just amazing miracles after praying the rosary, miracles after just uh, praying for intercession from saints. It's just amazing. Like, I'm like, wow, I literally just asked for prayer about that and then it happened. Okay, um, so this is probably like a long enough video for like this type of introduction. Okay, so those of you who are using Lamp and Light homeschooling, I wrote that as a Protestant. So, and all the women who work for me, including our editor, they're all Protestant. Um, I am writing Catholic uh, Lamp and Light, but that is the same thing as um, Lamp and Light, the, the regular volumes that are out, just the church history is different and we added in stories about saints. And there might we might do like rosary praying stuff, but the rest of it's all the same. Um, like, okay, so th that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, those of you who are worried, I do realize that some of you just won't be comfortable with it, even though it's, uh, it was written by a Protestant and it's checked by all the Protestants uh, that work for me. Um, no one's Catholic that works for me, so <laughs> it's just me. Um, and then I'm gonna have a Catholic editor go through the Catholic stuff just to make sure nothing's messed up. Um, Cause that's important, obviously. Um, I did, I guess I'll just kind of finish with, um, the, the, the biggest thing that started to bother me, um, was, um, I know, um, as a Protestant, we always, when we read the Bible, we always, um, depend on the, the Holy Spirit to help guide us to, uh, interpret it. Um, because, uh, Protestants believe, and I, and I used to believe in Sola Scriptura and the Bible is the only source that we need, which is, um, there's Bible verses about that not being true, uh, not being so. Um, but the the thing that really, really, really bothered me, and it's it's without realizing it, it's been bothered. That's what I kind of mentioned before. It's kind of been bothering me always with church shopping. Um, there's over thirty three thousand Protestant denominations, and that is astounding. The Holy Spirit, we all know, is infallible. The Holy Spirit can't be wrong. If the Holy Spirit's not wrong, and there's so many people interpreting the Bible through the Holy Spirit, how is everything so different? Even one Methodist church to another Methodist church. And, um, you know, I used to say, but but the core thing is, is the same. You know, one God, Jesus, our Savior, all that's the same. Yes, um, but it, it really isn't the same. It's 
everyone believes differently. Every time I go to a new church or a shop, church shop, I had to look up the statement of faith and make sure that some churches believe in sprinkling of baptism, some believe in infant baptism, uh, some believe in, you know, you have to be a full submersion. And it's just different everywhere. Everything's different. There's no, but every single one of them feels led by the Holy Spirit. But over 33,000 Protestant denominations is a lot. Something's, something's broken. Um, and the Holy Spirit can't be wrong, so something else is wrong. Um, I'm just gonna finish uh, with um, just some some of my my favorite scriptures that kind of helped me. Um, I know the traditions really was hard for me too. Um, in the New Testament, there's a lot of uh, well, Jesus said. What did I say? Sorry, I'm using the NIV Bible. You probably can't, you can't even see that. Okay, so it's the NIV version on my phone. Um, this one's a this one's an ESV. It also the same thing, but um, just so you know what, what I'm reading from, um, and it's uh, Protestant. I'm not reading from a well. There's no Catholic NIV, but anyways, uh, Jesus replied, "And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition?" Um, this is pre-crucifixion, so Jesus isn't talking to Catholics. Um, he's talking to Jews, um, and you know. Jews were becoming Christians. They were following him. They were becoming disciples. They were still, it's, I can imagine that had to be really hard to be God's chosen people, to be Jewish and Jesus being who he said he was. I can imagine that, that was hard to kind of break from those traditions that God was coming to, to make changes to, to, you know, um, rebuild the church. So I, I can see why, why he's saying that when he's talking to them. They were just, people were just like, what? We're not even doing these traditions anymore? Like, what is that about? So then why would Catholics have traditions? I'm just going to see if I can find my little bookmarks. Sorry. I'm not going to edit this out because, um, where are my bookmarks? Bookmarks. Oh, no, highlights. I use a highlighter and I use fun colors because it's fun. All right. Um. This is in 2 Thessalonians 2.15. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. And that coming off of what John said, um, John 21.25 says, Jesus did many other things. He's speaking after uh, the miraculous catch of fish. And it was the very last um, verse in this chapter 21, uh, John. Um, if every one of them were, so Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that not even the whole world would not, ha the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So they were called to go out, you know, and, and spread the good news. Um, it wasn't all written down to be put in the Bible. They had to, they had to speak it. Um, they were, you know, given the gift of speaking in different languages by the Holy Spirit. Um, and that closed up a room, that locked up a room where Jesus appeared. That's um, a locked door is not enough for Jesus. So um, I love that. I love that story because of that. So um, anyways, I, I guess I can share a few more. Oh, I love this. Um, when Jesus is um, talking to the, the apostles, he said, um, this is John 20, 21 through 23. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Um, that was <sighs> confession. <laughs> There's other verses about confession, but that was one that I just was like, wow, like that's straight from the mouth of Jesus. So. Um, oh yeah, that's such a great verse. Okay, so this could be like hours and hours long, and I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm gonna link some things in the below. If you're just curious, you don't have to. I'm not telling you to like be Catholic right now. Like, I'm just um, just for those who are curious and wondering like how I got here. Like like why would you think that that's okay? Here's 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 where that came from. So just for the curious. Um, so I'll just leave links to, it'll be either videos or articles or just whatever, things that help me um, understand because, well, like in the beginning of my journey, I wasn't trying to understand. I was trying to prove Catholics wrong. So it <laughs> didn't exactly work the way I planned, but um, I, I guess I just, I, I hope that we can all just still be kind um, to each other and not um, post lies, like make, make sure you're 
fact checking first. Um, anyone that asks questions, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. Um, if you're just going to post mean things that are either degrading, belittling, um, angry, or like that, that, that kind of realm, um, we're not going to tolerate that here. I'm sorry. Um, there's just, there's just no need for that. That's not the thing that always gets me in every single faith, in any faith that uh, anyone could follow. And even if there's Catholics that do this, um, when you disagree with someone in their faith, attacking them is not the best way to try to show them Jesus. Not to, like if you're right, if you fully believe that you are right, yelling at someone and just kind of degrading what they believe is not going to want bring them to what you believe. Does that make sense? So it's not like that would push someone away. Anyone. Um, I think I think even one of my Protestant pastors said. Um, the the worst example of Christianity is Christians because you know I mean we're human we don't do the best job all the time but let's try to change things you know let's try to open up a dialogue and not attack each other for our belief we all love Jesus we all love God so let's not like you know attack each other if you think you're right that's that's I, I get that I get that because I was I, that was me so um, just you know Let's not be mean. Let's not be nice. Let's be nice, okay? Um, it makes me really sad. I don't mean to take things personally, but it makes me cry when people are mean. So I'm like, please don't be mean. I'm kind of gentle sometimes. Oh, okay, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that explained things um, for everyone that was uh, asking questions, wondering why why we're Catholic. We, we joined this past Easter vigil, and I don't know why I decided to wear mascara. I never wear makeup, I'm not wearing any. Now this is what my skin looks like, sorry. Uh, not sorry. Um, I had like mascara like, all over my face. My kids were bawling when I was getting baptized. I had to be uh, rebaptized. There's no proof of my baptism. There's no baptismal cer certificate. My husband had one, and my kids have one, but I, don't, I didn't have one. So I had to get rebaptized, which is, well, it's not rebaptized because Catholics don't believe in that. It's a conditional baptism, like just in case you weren't baptized, here's your baptism. So I was, I was like 17 or so, but um, I don't really remember it. <laughs> I don't know. So anyways, I'm rambling, but so that's, that's my story from Muslim to atheist to Christ follower. Um, and now I'm part of the, the Catholic church and part of the body of the Catholic church. And I just, oh my gosh, I can't even, I love it. So I hope, um, I hope that was helpful and, um, you guys have a blessed day.